service of CNC Worldwide. The CNC Daily is a service of CNC News and Jib Jab Greetings. I'm Bud Lowell. Your full AccuWeather forecast is always on the top right here on your CNC local page. We all believe campaign contributions influence politics and government, but for decades, political scientists haven't been able to measure the direct connection between money and legislative outcomes. Now a new approach worked out by a University of Rochester professor provides strong evidence that donations do directly influence the legislative process. Using a national analysis of state legislators, Linda Powell documents subtle and not-so-subtle ways in which money buys influence from setting a party's agenda, to keeping bills from reaching debate, to adding earmarks for pet projects, and crafting key language into legislation. Powell says this doesn't show up in how the lawmakers vote. Most legislators vote with their party and their constituency once they get on the floor. In her new book, The Influence of Campaign Contributions, Powell says the real power of money is felt long before the roll call in determining how proposed laws are worded, and which ones get to the floor. Powell finds political money carries more weight in states like New York that have more highly paid legislators, larger chambers, and more professionalized leadership. Donors to campaign coffers wield less power in states with term limits and more highly educated voters. Monroe County Executive Maggie Brooks pointed to a flat tax rate, balanced budgets, and economic development Thursday as she delivered her annual State of the County Address at St. John Fisher College. In her ninth year as county executive, Brooks' hour-long speech was also a chance for her to lay out her case for election to the House of Representatives. The Republican has so far focused her campaign against Democrat Louise Slaughter for the 25th District Congressional seat on her ability to make government live within its means. Brooks didn't directly mention her congressional campaign during her address, but she said Monroe County is poised for greatness. The editors of TheStreet.com, an American financial news and services website, recently took a look at our region's strengths. Placing us alongside iconic cities like Chicago and London, here's what they said. Our community is one of the top ten places poised for greatness in the year 2012. No, not one of the top places in the state, not even one of the top places in the nation. We are one of only 10 places in the entire world to make that list. Absolutely. Brooks also sounded a bipartisan note, crediting Governor Andrew Cuomo and Rochester Mayor Thomas Richards, both Democrats, for their work on behalf of economic development in Rochester. Democrats weren't as sanguine about Brooks' assessment of the county's well-being Thursday night. Ted O'Brien, the leader of the Democratic minority on the Monroe County Legislature, said Brooks has kept the tax rate low partly by selling off county assets, including land and parking garages. O'Brien said the county owned nearly a billion dollars in fixed assets a decade ago, just over half that now. He also said the county has taken on a heavy debt burden, amounting to $389 million. A dozen Rochester area high schools have been rated among the nation's top schools in a yearly list published by the Washington Post. Education reporter Jay Matthews puts this list together each year. It looks at how well a school prepares students for college, and then it assigns each school an index score based mainly on the number of college-level tests given at a school divided by the number of graduates. The formula also includes how well students do despite poverty and a couple of other factors. The list ranks more than 2,000 schools nationwide. The top-ranking Rochester area school this year, Pittsford Sutherland. They came in 123rd, and their challenge ranking was 4.577. Here's the list by rank. Pittsford Sutherland at 123. In 182nd place, Pittsford Menden. So the Pittsford Central has the top two schools. 204th place, Odyssey Academy in Greece, with the third highest-ranking school in the area. Brighton High at 255, Victor High, number 560 on the list. Then comes Honeyoy Falls, Lima at 677. Arondequoit High School, the West Arondequoit District, 678th place right behind. Webster Thomas and Webster, 811 out of the top 2,000. Hilton High, 1,031st place. 
Penfield in Penfield Central, 1,069. East Ridge in the East Irondequoit District makes the top 2,000, 1,331st place in the nation. And Fairport High in Fairport, number 1,449 out of the top 2,000. Those driving to the east side of Monroe County can now check the status of the Irondequoit Bay Bridge on Twitter. Construction crews have been closing lanes overnight, and they'll also be closing the bridge on a couple of weekends this summer so they can rehab the bridge joints. The Webster Chamber of Commerce has set up a Twitter feed that updates the bridge status. You can find it by searching at 104 Bridge. On this page, you can find links to these and other stories. At the bottom, links for you to use. You can post us your own news updates, sports, and salutes. Next news as it happens, updates when necessary. I'm Bud Lowell, CNC News.